this is going to be essentially my unboxing screen. So anytime I'm unboxing, doing an unkind of an unboxing deck or an unboxing video for like I did the witch, the witchcraft box the other day, all that other kind of thing, it's kind of, it will kind of work on that in here. I'm having a, a little bit of problem with my white balance on my cards right now. So I kind of, I apologize. They're a little bit washed out compared to what they should be. But the deck that I have, as you can see over that way, that way, that way, ah, pointing. Um, it's the Dream Visions Tarot deck by uh, Emma Zhang. And you can find it for pre-order right now on dreamvisionstarot.com. Like I said, this was a Kickstarter deck initially. So usually after the Kickstarters have been fulfilled, there's a period of time where they, any X, once they all get the, the originals get sent out, usually the creator will create an, a Etsy store or sell directly from a website if you want it. So, but I wanted to show it, uh, it off first. So it's really kind of cool. It has, it's holographic kind of edges to them. And the artwork, again, it's got the seeing eye on the background. And the artwork kind of ranges from pastel, like kind of like this, um, the fool here. I think it's upside down. So the magician, the high priestess, but it's got kind of this really interesting artwork style to it. They are so pretty. So I wanted to kind of throw these out here so you can kind of get a feel for what they look like before I before I shuffle them and then we do our interview. So we've got Emperor, Hierophant. Twins, which will take the place of the lover's card. Again, that's one of the changes. Some decks will do different things. Chariot. They're very ethereal and kind of galaxy-esque. So it makes me think of, again, moons and stars and galaxies. And I really like that kind of style of artwork. Hermit. Wheel of Fortune. Justice. Hanged Man, Death, ooh, that's a pretty death card. Oh, I like that. Temperance, The Devil, interesting devil card. Tower, okay, interesting tower card. Star, Moon, ooh, that's a dark card, but it's pretty. Oh, look at that sun. Look at that glowing color vibrancy. Oh, that's awesome. Judgment. The world. And then, okay, so these are the aces of wands. So two, three, four, five, Six. Ooh, I like that one. Seven. Eight. Well, in the tarot, there are your major arcana, which were those first ones that um, had names to them. And then there are your minor arcana, which correspond to elements. Wands are fire. And the one through ten is different in, in the decks. And then there are court cards, so nine and then ten. And there are court cards, which would be the page the knight, the queen, and the king. If you study through the tarot, what is often called the fool's journey is the major arcana. The fool is this person who's naive and willing and just starting out. And as they journey through the major points of their life, they go through all the stages of the major arcana. You meet people, you have heartbreaks, you have all these other kinds of things that happen. The the major arcana tell those different points in time in your life, in your life story. The minor arcana are, again, correspond to elements and they are in every deck, but they're going to be not always labeled the same in every deck. And the wands, wands are the suit of fire. Fire is creative energy. Um, and so while you, the major arcana is this kind of overarching arc of the major events of your life story, think of the minor arcana as the day-to-day -day issues. 
as you are struggling with individual day-to-day -day problems that require creativity or passion or energy or all those other kinds of things, that is where the minor arcana fit in. Wands being fire, we then have uh, cups, which is water. And are these all, they've all flipped again. So we have the Ace of Cups, the Two of Cups, okay. The Three of Cups, ooh, that's pretty colors. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 of Cups. So water as an element is emotions, how you're feeling about things. Behind that, we have we have the Page of Cups. So these are court cards. And again, the Page, Knight, Queen, and King on here. And wow, those are pretty, really pretty. Okay. Swords, Swords is air. And what I like to say for swords, swords is always a hard, sharp edged. The suit of swords can get a little bit rough, especially when we're talking about communication issues. Page, knight, queen, and king. And then the last suit is the suit of pentacles, or in this case, I think it is coins. So pentacles often will be coins, Shields, it really kind of depends on the deck. Of course, if all the other ones are fire, water, and air, this is the element of earth. Coins deal with, with money. They deal with the foundation, the material kind of thing. So it is career, it is um, life paths, life journeys. All those kinds of things fall into your pentacles. Okay, so you are calling them pentacles coin, even though there's no actual pentacles in their pentacle circles. So these are what the cards are. This is the new deck. And like I said, this is gorgeous. I'm very excited about this deck. So now we're going to start mixing and matching all these up. The one thing I will say that I do not like about this particular deck um, is that it does not come with a little black book. It doesn't give you the book of meanings to it. The author does say she follows the standard RWS, Rider Waite Smith format. So you could Google search any of the of the cards and it should give you the, the generalized meanings for them. She does offer a electronic PDF version. So there's a website that you can download the, the book basically. So you have it on your phone or on your computer. I really like flipping back and forth to read it out loud. So I'm going to pull it up on my phone. Yeah, you probably be able to see it on here, but you can kind of see they have the major arcana, the breakdown of the cards. So it's it, it's not very detailed, but it will have some sort of detail as to what the meanings and everything are. I will be, again, as I'm doing the interpretations, I'll give you mine, but I will pull the meanings also from here and what her interpretations are of them. And mostly I'm kind of just doing all of this to kind of get them loosened up so they don't stick together before I start shuffling them. They are nice, heavy cardstock, which is really nice. Okay, okay. A good little solid mix here. So let's do some shuffling. Card size is nice. It feels good in the hands. Oops, shuffles pretty nicely. You'll find I often use idioms or phrases or pop culture references sometimes to help give an example of what a suit is because to me that, that will help trigger something to stay um, and make a little bit more sense. Here we go. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do what's called a new deck introduction spread. And this is one of the things I do recommend doing with any of your decks. 
whether you're doing a tarot or if you can even do this in a modified sense with an oracle the oracles give slightly different types of guidance and they're very useful but they don't follow the same the same format as a traditional tarot deck does the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to ask the question who are you what kind of deck are you tell me about yourself so this kind of gets the feels of what is this deck going to offer in way of guidance and communication so we have the king of pentacles this deck is going to be more focused on life path life career uh, kinds of choices and examples coming out of it kings are the the end of the of the court they are the highest ruler kings rule the kingdom basically they know exactly what they want and we're talking about pentacles with it combined with earth you have the king being a very wealthy prosperous knows what they're doing kind of energy they've worked hard they are overseeing a very wealthy kingdom they are not dealing with bullshit they know exactly what they want they know how to do it and they're not afraid of hard work to get there it's gonna be a little bit more career and life focused what are your strengths Ooh, the devil as a strength. Ooh, that's interesting. Think of the devil in common mythology uh, as this temptation, this temptress, this thing that's going to punish us for all eternity because of the sins we create. What this idea is of the devil in this particular aspect is what are your strengths? The strength is looking at things from a different perspective. It is looking at what is tempting you what are the things that you need to think about um, and how to work around those kinds of, of of situations that are coming through this is going to be oh god i'm super excited about this <laughs> i am between these two cards i'm i'm fascinated to see what's going to come out of this what are your weaknesses or your limitations as a deck so like i said every deck has their strengths and their weaknesses just like every person does and knowing what they are is not necessarily a bad thing it is not a bad thing to have a weakness um it just means that this is an area where you need more growth where you can strengthen so what are we looking at for weakness communication and that ace of swords so aces are the one card and so what this is kind of saying this is saying that we're talking earthly things we're talking about temptation and thinking what it's telling me for weakness is this is going to be a little bit less about the mind um, a little bit less about what your mind is telling you you need to do and a little bit more about the other emotions in there it's going to be more about your passion it's going to be more about your creativity it's going to be more about your emotions and less about the mind and even though communication is still important but again all those kinds of things so it's going to be more in that kind of empathetic versus um logical rational kind of thing and that holds true it makes sense with the devil being there because the devil is temptation and temptation doesn't tempt your mind it tempts your heart it tempts your desires it tempts all those kinds of things i'm perfectly okay having a deck that's a little bit lighter on the on the heavy sword energy they're still in there they're still going to happen but most of my other decks like to kick me in the butt with the swords what kinds of readings do you prefer uh death we think of death as being a scary thing it's it's right up there with the devil as a scary card especially for those who are new to tarot but death in this case is transformation it's letting go of one thing to be able to transform into something else it's this matter of a cycle of birth and rebirth what kind of readings do you prefer readings that revolve around a transformation those kinds of changes and do I need to take this next step what will happen if I take this next step all these kinds of kinds of energies last card what's the best way for you, uh, for me to collaborate with you meaning the deck this is judgment there is a lot of major arcana in this but judgment is again about this idea of holding a place and taking in all of the information that's around you thinking about it and presenting it in a format and being judged good or judged ill that is can't have the shadow without the light so it's not a good or bad kind of situation it's really about a matter of of waiting 
what it is you're looking for and making sure that you are on the right path and making sure you're going forward on that right path. That is my interpretation of what this of what the cards are telling me. But like I said, I want to get you a feel for what the author has to say and how her interpretation may be slightly different than mine. But this is what I'm feeling from these cards. Who are you? Tell me more about yourself. The King of Pentacles. Her interpretation is known as a trustworthy and successful businessman. He's resourceful, principled, and successful. He's serious about his wealth and business. Focused determination and perseverance are his virtues. If he makes a decision, he will follow through with it, regardless of whether he builds an empire or cuts personal ties. Through hard work, he's determined to build his own kingdom and legacy. If he falls into the lower frequency, he might be too rigid, not flexible, and only estimate people's worth based on their work. The devil for strengths. Two souls are chained despite their will. The space between them is actually empty, but it makes them feel trapped and powerless. However, they're unaware they have the ability to reverse the curse that has taken away their freedom. The devil is a symbol of temptation, our ability to be led astray and our inclination for overindulgence. He appears when you believe you have complete control over your life, but you are only being misled by the devil within. If you're willing to dig deeper, you will discover the solid foundation you have built, you have is built on attachments. Their example of what their weakness is, the cosmic force of logic and thought, invocation of truth. It symbolizes the power that can summon both good and evil. Ace of Swords can cut through all the attachments that are trapping a person in a situation. Stop putting off the inevitable, face your truth. You're being encouraged to make logical and correct decisions, be assertive, fair and authoritative. What type of readings do you prefer? In the death card, we are told to let go of old patterns in order to make way for something new. This is not a slow change, but often a swift one. By the end of the cycle, the querent can move on to a better period of their life and achieve a major release. Life is a journey and no one knows where it will end. People are prone to postponing major changes. Such a card indicates an individual who has come to some overwhelming problems that must be addressed immediately. And the last card of judgment is the trumpet of the Archangel Gabriel is urging you to awaken and transform your old pattern of behavior and awaken to truth, consciousness, and the reality of your true self. This card is frequently interpreted as a sign of soul renewal, forgiveness, spiritual awakening, spiritual rebirth, and a readiness to move forward. The past is gone. The future is uncertain. But what is certain is you are being called to rise above all that has gone before and to become more than you have been. As you can see from when I am doing my interpretation of it versus what the author has to say, there are differences, but overall the themes are very, very similar to what's being said. It's so funny. The first few times as you're doing tarot, um, it's, you kind of go through the cycle. Then you first get that the death card or you get the devil card, which is interesting. They both came up in this deck and you're like, oh my God, what's going on? Is this satanic? What's happening? And then as you go on and you get familiar with it, it's like, oh no, devil is talking about temptation. Death is talking about rebirth and those changes that need to happen. They're scary at first, but when you know what they mean, they're less scary. And then you start thinking about the tower card. And the tower is like this catastrophic, catas cataclysmic kind of change and shift. And then you start freaking out over the tower card when it comes up in your readings. And that's stage two is the tower card starts freaking you out. And then stage three, um, you'll start to find other cards. For me, my least favorite cards uh, are the three of swords, um, which is complete and total heartbreak. And the nine of swords, which is that overwhelming anxiety and depression and just not knowing what's going to happen. Um, just that, that place of utter despair. So it's really a matter of, of the, as you learn the nuances of what the different cards mean, you start to fear different cards when they come up in pulls. <laughs> tarot decks are, and tarot cards, they are representation of life events. The life changes. Life itself is not always pleasant. Um, we want it to be, and we strive for happiness. And there's, goddess knows, so many moments of time where there's happy, where you're happy and there's pleasure and there's joy and so many other things. But there's also with that flip side, there's moments of despair and there's moments of not knowing what you're doing and fear and uncertainty. And all of those types of emotions and everything else are reflected in a card. 
and being able to kind of break it all down. It's kind of fascinating to me, honestly, to see the variety and, and everything that goes into it and how those nuances can come in. And like I mentioned earlier, give a perspective of what you are looking at and what you're looking and working towards. That's the new deck. I think this is going to be a fun one. 